Hello. Uh, today's video looks at um, Pythagoras theorem and the reason for that is I want to look at the skill of modelling and if you're a maths teacher I want to focus on the language of maths, algebra. Um, it really comes from um, this idea that if we want students to think really hard in our subject we have to teach them the language of our subject and for maths that's algebra and uh, my son is teaching me how to prove Pythagoras and why this is much better than just teaching mathematical methods. See what you think. Yeah, take it away. All right, so you start by just drawing a square. Which uh, doesn't really matter how good it is as long as it's slightly square shaped. So this is a proof attributed to, I think, um, a 12th century Hindu mathematician called Bhaskara or something. Right, and we're going to tilt the square slightly to the side um, with the aim of uh, drawing another square over it. Right. So we're going to draw another square across the top. Right. Okay. This is. So the idea is that it touches the corners. So we're going to have a square inside a square, right? and all of these You'll see that why it needs to look like this. Shall I show you? Um, slightly off as a square, but there you go. That's good enough. It's a square inside a square. Okay, so we can see the, the four right angle yeah, triangles. Yeah, you'll notice on the these are four right angle triangles, and because the length of this side's the same, and they're they've all got the same angle here, they're all the same triangle. Right? So we're just going to label this length of this side here is going to be a the length of this side we'll call B, the length of this one C. Right. That's the same true for there's B again and C here. Alright, so from this we can see the area of the total square is B plus C as one of the length of the sides times B plus C. So I'll just call that B plus C squared. Right. So that's the large that's square the on the outside. Square. Yeah? Yeah. And we can say that the area of the larger square We'll keep this at the top. The area of the larger square, there you go, is equal to the area of the smaller square plus the area of the, the four, triangles. four triangles you see there. Yeah. Yep. So we ask what's the area of the smaller square? Well, you see the sides A, and so the area of the smaller square is. Uh, uh, we'll just call this a squared. Right? Yep. Yep. Um, what's the area of a triangle that has base C in this case and height B? Um, well, it's just half base times height, right? Isn't it B times C? Yeah. Yeah. So we construct this equation at the top. We have B plus C all squared equals a squared plus half b times c. Okay, but there are four of them, so it's four times half b times c. Okay. okay. So we're going to expand b plus c, so b plus c times b plus c. Uh, what does that equal? Well, you can use the FOIL method first, then you add your outside, and then your inside, and then your last. Right, so first time first, b times b, b squared. Outside b times c, b times c. Inside again b times c, so we'll just put a 2 there. And last c squared. Right. So the FOIL method seems a bit convoluted to me. Have you got an easier way that you do it? Uh, no. This okay. is, um, you, you can learn, you're taught to learn a formula. Anything, any two numbers squared is, so a, a plus b all squared, oh, b plus c all squared is just going to be b squared plus c squared plus 2ab. That's, that, you know, that's, a, that's the standard way you're taught with GCSE. Okay. But the FOIL method is how it works for, for all different... So if you had some a plus b times c plus d, and you let them in, that's how you times it out using the FOIL method. Okay. So we've got b squared plus 2bc plus c squared. So what do we have? b squared plus 2bc plus c squared is equal to a squared. Right, back to this equation at the top. 
4 times a half times b times c. 4 times a half is just 2, and we get 2bc. Right? Now we're going to take away 2bc from both sides of the equation. We're left with b squared plus c squared is equal to a squared. Right? Yeah. And there you go, that's, that's Pythagoras. Maybe not, not with the letters you particularly want, but Pythagoras nonetheless. Not right. That's all right. Okay. So why do you reckon this proof is better than the normal one where you get the triangle with the three squares oh, off it? Um, well, the main reason is that it's the only actual proof. I mean, you've never, you, I was never taught and nobody I've ever met was taught with uh, anything different than, than this method. You, you draw a right angled triangle to the class and you, you draw squares from it. Yeah. Um, maybe you get people to cut out squares. Or yeah. You do an interactive whiteboard where you move the squares into each other or something similar to that. Um, and and you've just shown that for a few triangles, maybe three or four triangles, this works. This is true. But this is not a proof. This It just means it works for a few triangles. Okay. Um, so that's 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 the uh, a rather snooty mathematical reason why this might be true, because we do a lot of that in GCSE. But the main reason is, I mean, what what's the benefit of doing this? You're saying that this is true for some triangles, length 3, 4, 5, or whatever. Um, and then you give them this formula, you're saying, right, so we'll just call that A, we'll call that B, and we'll call that C. We'll say A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Yeah. True, but, I mean, if you're going to teach it that way, you might as well just teach it this way. You say, for any right-angled triangle with sides A, B, and C, it is true that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, end of lesson. I mean, you've learned Yeah, yeah you've learned you can just jump, things. bypass that stage. Because you've actually gained no no different understanding by drawing squares around it, um, it's the same thing. Now, what do you what 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 Can you I do? Just pause you a second. Yeah. So, are you saying this method tells you why it's true? Well, I'm going to give a few points as to. Okay. okay. Um, so, so the first reason that might appeal to maths teachers mainly is uh, what do maths teachers always tell you at GCSE? Most important thing in the world is practice. Right? Yes. Um, so, what are you practicing in 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 this? You're practicing reading off a formula sheet. You're, yeah. you're doing absolutely nothing. What are you practicing when you learn this proof? I mean, you're squaring things. You're doing you're doing your simultaneous equations. You're actually doing some maths. Yes. Right. What's also important is it gives applications to things that students do not believe have applications. Right. So this, you if you teach when you teach a student this, especially lower lower set students, they don't believe it's relevant at all in anything. Mm -hmm. Right. You teach a student Pythagoras and they, they can understand how that might be useful. You can give them some examples of how you might build things with Pythagoras and that that's really obvious to them. Um, and it's obvious to a lot of kids. Now, when you're teaching Pythagoras, why don't you show them that this is used here? I mean, why don't you show them that all the maths you've been teaching them all year has actual, actual applications in real life? Um, I mean, if you want kids to be interested in maths, the best way to do it is show them that the maths is relevant. And if you're going to... I can see that. How are you going to show that that is relevant to applications in real life? Well, this... My, my point is the proof of Pythagoras, the proof of the thing that you need to use to build everything you're going to build. Right. Like the proof of Pythagoras requires you to be able to do this kind of thing. Right. Right. Um, and then on top of that, you get the practice... And then, of course, this is an actual proof. I mean, this is what maths is, isn't it? I mean, so what are you gaining? You're gaining for advanced kids. You're introducing them to geometric proofs, an easy geometric proof, and the idea of actual maths occurring. Right. Now, this is real maths. This is, this is rigorous. This is, this is about as rigorous as you can get geometrically. But, um, for your lower set kids, what are you giving them? You're giving them applications of maths they're using. You're explaining to them... To, uh, Especially with the, especially with this proof, where you might, where you'd start with triangles and you might add the triangles together into a, to build the square in the middle, you're showing them that it's it is just clearly true for every every right angle triangle now. I mean, when I learned, I was in top set maths. I mean, really top set maths, and I wasn't entirely sure. I had to convince myself every time that this only works with right angle triangles. I mean, that's true, but why is it true when you do? When you draw your triangle and put your squares around it, it's not it's not at all obvious that it only works for right angle triangles. This becomes very obvious because we're we're drawing right angle triangles and you can only get the square from the construction of these right angle triangles. 
So this clearly only works with right angled triangles. Um, because there is no other way to build no other, a square. There is no other way you can build that square. I understand. So, Thank you very much. Sorry. Are you ready? I am. We're going to start with a triangle, a right angled triangle. Just for ease, we're going to have a height of around 5 centimetres and a, a base of 3. Okay. Let's start with that triangle. So, what I want to do is split this side up, this height up, into a length of the base, 3, and then the rest, which will be 2. So, we're just going to draw a line 2 centimetres up here. Okay? So, that's the same length as the yeah. base. This is 2 centimetres. Now, let's make a square from this 2 centimetre portion. This chunk. Okay? Yeah. Now, as we can just draw this triangle that's been stuck on the side of that square on the, every side of the square. Yeah. Right? You see that? Um, so we need to go up three centimetres, complete the triangle. Okay. Again, here we. Oh, where's three? There's three. Go up three centimetres, complete the triangle. And then we complete the square there. There you go. So now we've got four triangles wrapped around a square. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to call the the whole length of this side here A. Yeah. The whole length of this B and the hypotenuse of the triangle we can call C. Yep. Yeah. So what's the area of the larger square in this case? The area of the larger square. Yeah. So that's going to be each side is C, so it's going to be C squared. Yeah. Okay, okay I'm with you. Um, what's that made out of? We can split it up into this smaller square here. Right. Yeah. And then the four triangles. Okay. So the smaller square, what side length have this got? Well, it's A minus B, isn't it? I mean, if this whole length's A and that whole length's B, then it's A minus B. Right? Okay. You see that? Um, so the area of the smaller square... is equal to a minus b all squared. Yeah, a minus b times a minus b because it's... Because square. when we measured it, that side was the same as that, yeah. wasn't it? Well, all of these triangles are the same, so why don't we say, what's in this triangle, what is that length? I mean, it's, it's this one, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's that side, so if we make this side a and this side b, what's the difference between them? Well, it's a minus b, isn't it? Because yeah. a is larger than b. Okay. Yeah. So the area of the smaller square is a minus b all squared. What are the what are the area of the triangles? What's its base? Uh, b. Um, what's its height? Is a. A and half because it's a triangle. Right? Yep. Yep. So let's say c squared, the area of the big square, is equal to a minus b squared, the area of the smaller square in the middle, plus the area of the four triangles, so that's four times a half times b times a. Yeah. Okay. So c squared, let's expand this like we did before, we get a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Right? Similarly to that, using the four yeah. method. Four times a half times b times a is just plus 2ab, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so these obviously plus 2ab, minus 2ab, you get 0, so we'll just cross them out. We get, okay. of, we get c squared equals a squared plus b squared, or as in how we're used to reciting it, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Right? Pythagoras. Just from constructing triangles around a square. Lovely. Any time.